Hey everybody, welcome back. So I recently had a KRK Rocket 5, a Generation 2, come in um, to the shop and it wasn't working. And so I grabbed the camera and filmed a couple things and there's just a few thoughts I want to share with you. So we're going to get right into it. So basically, um, there were a pair of KRK Rocket 5 speakers that came in. One of them was working, one wasn't. Um, I suggested that the second one come in just for some preemptive maintenance with it. But uh, these speakers basically had the black goo issue, um, like you've seen about you know a million times on, on different sites and forums and things. Um, so I'm going to go through a couple things that I did to repair these ones and get them working again. And uh, we'll probably come back here and I've got a few other thoughts to share with you after I go through um, some of the main points that I already pre-recorded. So I mean you can see on this unit here I've already removed the caps. I have replaced these two um, jumpers here. There was this one resistor I replaced. Uh, these other components in here I was actually able to clean up the leads good enough and all that's left here is a little bit of flux. Um, I've got a couple more jumpers here to replace but you'll see like up over even here on the power supply, this is a very common, this uh, 2K resistor over here. This one uh, commonly uh, heats up a little bit and it sort of bakes that compound and then the compound sort of becomes almost like an insulator and seems to trap heat because you can see even on some of these components in here where they were heating up and it was actually causing damage but this potting compound is even down like in these in these diodes down in the through holes for them so uh, yeah now this stuff that's on top of these caps I wouldn't necessarily worry about that too much um, it shouldn't be as much of an issue now if you get done cleaning the board and everything uh, you know, and this was gooped down over the side and touching something, of course, that could be an issue. But um, it just being on top of the caps here like this and on top of this one transistor, it shouldn't be an issue. So don't worry too much about that stuff, uh, at least not right off the bat. But like all down in here, all this corroded junk, like right on where the wires are coming out of the power amp, uh, and on this one, actually, it was even bad enough that uh, a lot of these other, even on back, there was actually corrosion from where, uh, you know, it was just corroding right, right down through uh, from the top to the underside of the board. So I've worked on quite a few of these now. Usually this is enough to resurrect them and they'll work for, work for years, uh, you know, but, you know, you have to be comfortable taking that risk. You sort of have to know what your skills are. And I'd say try it once or twice. That's the only way you're going to know if this is something that you can you can do um, reliably. This is one of the worst examples that I've ever seen. Um, and if we get a chance here, I'll actually show you uh, the other the other speaker. Um, how that one really has almost no signs whatsoever of the polyne compound going bad. Um, so that's another issue too. When you get these, make sure you get them in pairs uh, so that after you're done the repair, you can compare the two and make sure that they're going to image properly, that they're performing to a similar specification. Because if you don't do that, you could have one that's slightly muddier than the other and they'll never sound right in, in a stereo configuration.
Okay, so I've got the KRK Rocket 5s all sort of cleaned up here and uh, some of the components replaced, all the main ones. Uh, still not getting as loud a volume as what should be coming out of them, even with the volume turned all the way up. So this is a little trick that you can do with transistors that are partially conducting if you're getting some volume to the circuit um, to figure out whether it is the transistors themselves or some other component uh, that's malfunctioning. And basically what you want to do is you want to turn your input volume all the way up, run a reasonable signal. You want to be careful that it's not too loud. Um, run it through and we're gonna spray it with uh, a can of compressed air. We're just gonna flip it upside down so that the liquid CO2 is gonna freeze the transistors. Now there's a couple different models um, models of these amp boards but basically the two transistors that uh, are malfunctioning are these two here. So we're going to uh, chill those down and see if it comes back. Okay, so this was just for demonstration purposes. I've already done this before, and you notice when I sprayed it down, a bunch of stuff in there um, sort of iced up and whatnot. So once you do that, if you get it to work, you also want to be a little bit more targeted with your spray and um, use a smaller amount coming out just to sort of freeze one transistor at a time and make sure like, you're not getting that bigger, um, that bigger uh, uh, chip that's in there. So this part of the circuit here, um, as far as I can tell from what I can sort of piece together is actually the limiting circuit and a lot, a lot of these types of speakers both monitors and PA speakers um, the limiting circuit if you're getting volume through where you get a lot of crackling and stuff like that uh, a lot of times you'll find that the volume problems are actually being caused by the, the limiting circuit uh, kicking in sometimes they'll go into distortion and sometimes they're just not allowing the output volume uh, to uh, to come up to where it should be up up to up to full now this is only for this model of speaker there's a different type that has uh, an opto coupler that they'll use um, to control that circuit so more than likely if you did have a problem and it was in that part of the circuit it would be with one of the transistors um, otherwise the the opto coupler that's in there it would likely just be uh, non-functioning if there was an issue with it so I've got the new transistors, we're going to pop them in. I've already replaced the 16-pin uh, uh, TLO74 that's in there um, because that was not working correctly. Before I had replaced that, there was no volume at all coming out of this no matter what the level. So um, we're just going to replace those two last transistors and this unit should be good to go. Okay, so everything's been replaced and all fixed and let's see what we got going on here. So just a couple quick closing thoughts on this. Um, it may very well be worthwhile to repair um, these speakers rather than replace them, especially if you can do it yourself or you have a friend that's well versed in electronics, but cleaning them up really isn't that big of an issue. Um, now dealing with some of the comp uh, corrosion and having to re-solder some parts and things like that, um, you definitely want to know what you're doing there, but it, this isn't an overly difficult job. The thing that can be difficult is, you know, um, having to troubleshoot th things like the limiting circuit and things like that that are a little bit more in depth and you have to sort of have a little bit of an understanding of how they work to uh, really suss out what the problem is but hopefully the tips and tricks that I've given you um, will help you out in that scenario. 
Uh, something else to think about is that uh, to replace these with a newer version of the, the KRK rockets, especially the 5 and stuff like that, they're about 200 bucks a piece Canadian. Um, so you really don't want to spend too much time or too much money fixing them. Uh, if you think that the bills are going to add up to anywhere near that when you can just sort of replace them with a newer generation and there's some even better speakers than than the KRK rockets out there now uh, for a very reasonable price that's sort of just something to keep in mind as you're going through this process um, something else you may want to think about is that there's no guarantee after doing all these repairs and things like that that um, you're not going to have any issues down the road. So far I've had a pretty good success rate with these. There haven't been, there's probably only been about half a dozen of these that I've done. Um, but they seem to have worked after I've done done this type of work to them. So, you know, it may be the type of thing where it's very worthwhile, but there are never any guarantees with this sort of stuff. Um, the other, one other thing I wanted to cover is that um, I see in a lot of the forums people just go in and start replacing capacitors. There's no real reason to replace electrolytics on these unless you find that they're actually bad um, or if you extinguish most other options if you don't have good testing parameters for them. Uh, there's no reason to suspect automatically that it's just a capacitor issue because these don't seem to have any higher failure rate with capacitors than any other piece of gear that I've worked on. Um, you know, if you see that they're bulged or if you can test them and they're not in spec, then, then you replace them, but there's no reason just to go through and uh, start replacing all these capacitors because you know to get decent quality ones it can be fairly expensive by the time you you're all said and done whereas op amps and stuff like that and some of those little transistors for instance I mean they're not even a dollar a piece uh, you know the longest part of it and the most expensive part is just going to be soldering them in there so hopefully that helps you out um, if it did like and subscribe and uh, hopefully we'll see you back here for some more interesting content Cheers, guys.